Okay, today we're going to be talking about sonoluminescence, which is basically light from sound. And it is scientifically proven, and so we will see how it relates to God. On the first day, the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. So God spoke, and lights appeared. And people have laughed at that for years. Um, well, I've said God is energy. So when he speaks, energy comes out. And as sound, it forms light. So God's words are proven that he is scientifically correct in how he creates sound becomes light. So let's have a look at sonoluminescence. Sonoluminescence. Luminescence excited in a substance by the passage of sound waves through it. So that means light comes into being in a substance by the passage of sound waves through it. And the electric universe shows that the entire universe is full of plasma. And so that is a substance excited by sound which gives luminescence, which is how our suns form. They form along electrical Birkeland currents. So let's see the experiment in action. This star in a jar is made when a sound wave is passed through a small bubble inside a flask of liquid. And this sound wave makes the bubble do something remarkable. First it expands, then it collapses. And this collapse happens so violently that vapor molecules trapped inside the bubble slam together and heat up so much that the bubble gives off an incredible burst of heat and light several thousand times a second. Now what she said isn't quite correct there because she said a bubble inside a liquid. Um, the forcing of uh, sound through a liquid will create a cavity which is where the word cavitation comes from. Energy moves matter. And so the energy, when two Birkeland currents are forced together, create an Ouroboros torus of energy in the center, which pushes out matter. And that's what it does in the water. Now, a bubble underwater should be at a higher pressure than the water, so the bubble isn't collapsed. But a bubble in cavitation is low pressure. So how does it form a bubble if it's low pressure? It's because energy is pushing out the matter. It's got nothing to do with the matter. Energy moves matter, so energy creates a cavitation space. And when it collapses, the energy that is holding the bubble out collapses into a star and gives off light because the vibration of the bubble is condensed and compressed, so the frequency becomes higher and uh, the um, energy vibrates what little matter it has pushed out due to the low pressure, so there's not a lot in there. It's on strings pushing it out into an Ouroboros torus. So when that energy collapses, it vibrates through the low pressure matter, which means not a lot, and so gives off a lot of light and is in, um, has tens of thousand degrees uh, heat on its surface. Giving the appearance of a star. Okay, now this video uh, is the same thing, um, but this one is showing you actual Birkeland current strings in the water. It is energy, and it is where energy is shooting out from one point in Birkeland current fingers. Now I have said that all energy travels exactly the same, which is why I can compare it to this uh, Birkeland current um, where stars are formed in space. They form along strings, which is what you're seeing on the video. Um, and it's also how your brain connections are made. So that is what you are seeing on the screen. It is creation of a Birkeland current because things don't expand in huge bubbles. They reach a, an electrical potential, then shoot out a finger and begin to form a heteromach formation of stars along a Birkeland current bead line. This is the uh, Ganymede Herbig Hero object um, in space. And as you can see, there are plasma beads. They form along Birkeland currents because all energy travels in a double helix and either puts matter in or removes matter dependent upon the rotation of the Birkeland current. 
I then showed it uh, it was how all seed pods were driven and how seeds were created by the same process of Birkeland current matter placement or removal showing that energy moves the same way in all things. So what have I inferred here? I've inferred that all energy travels the same way in a Birkeland current and when two Birkeland currents meet um, they form an area of matter at low pressure that collapses and gives off light which is basically the same as an electrically charged superfluid plasma body like the Sun. All we have to do is turn it sideways and you have exactly what is happening in the water with the sound waves converging turning into an expansion which then collapses into a light wave due to the frequency suddenly increasing by the energy compressing. So these are the properties of sonoluminescence. Um, you can read them at your leisure. But basically, um, it's showing that the electric universe um, is basically being created by sound waves that obviously we cannot hear. It is the sound of energy movement which gives off light and sound. And so when we come back to God's words, we find out that his words are electrically, scientifically correct and that God spoke light into the universe. Let there be light, and there was light. So God's words of energy reverberated through matter and produced light because energy, electrical energy, which is what the universe contains, is what God is. God is alive, God is energy, God is electricity living electricity which is why we are all electric beings the life and light in men's eyes is electrical you turn off our electricity and we die so we come back to God again the more the electric universe is proven the more God is proven because God is electrical which is why they try to lie to you about gravity and fusion nonsense because it's nonsense the universe is electrical attraction and repulsion to move matter. It's how we move electrical impulses to move things. Seed pods, suns on strings, and lights in water. They all prove the universe is electrical and it travels in a Birkeland current. And when two opposing fields meet, two opposing fingers rotate in the same direction, both clockwise, you will get an Ouroboros torus sphere which when collapsed and reanimated gives off light. Thanks very much. My name is Lee and I'm a Christian.